Hey, I'm RC and this is the episode 5 about creating a multiplayer game using Node.js. So if you haven't watched the last episode, then I would highly recommend you to do so by clicking the annotation on the screen. So in this video, what I'm planning to do is to add bullets to the game. So there will be bullets shooting all around the place. Um, this video will contain a lot of object-oriented content. So if you're not really familiar with object-oriented, then I would highly recommend you to click the annotation on the screen to go check out another video I made um, a while ago about object-oriented. And it will be pretty much um, the same thing and what we are going to do today. Um, but in this video, I will assume that you already have some knowledge, so I will go a lot faster. So right now, this is what we got. We only have one class called um, player. So we create a player here, we add it to the list, and that's pretty much all we do. Um, I'm really gonna make it more um, modular, more object-oriented. So, um, well, if you only have one class, it's not really a big deal, but now we will have bullets. And bullets and players share a lot of stuff in common. So um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create another um, class it will be the soccer class of both player and bullet, and it will be the entity. So entity will contain everything that the player and the bullet share. Um, so there are a few things that they share. They both have an update loop that needs to update their position. So that's pretty much all the entity will, will be. So it has an ID, X, Y, speed. Um, the update right now, all it does is it updates the position depending on the speed. Now the job of the player over here it will look something like that. It's it's all the same attributes. Um, so I created by creating an entity and then I add properties on top of the entity. So the player has those attributes plus those attributes at the end. And I can also overwrite um, the different function. So right now if I keep it that way, then update position, this over here will be overwritten by this, it will work. Um, it, it, if I keep it that way, it will work for now. But I, I would prefer to use a speed system because eventually we will need to, to handle stuff with speed. So all I'm gonna do it is I'm gonna keep that as my update position. So this will die and instead it's gonna be called update speed. So this function that's pretty much the same thing. It loops through, um, it, it checks if you're pressing the right key. It will update the speed X, speed Y, depending on the key presses. So this function right now is not called. Um, the, the only thing that will be called at the end of the day will be the update loop from the entity, which update the position only. And, and like I said, I'm going very fast because I've done exactly the same thing in the episode six, uh, 16 of my um, single player multiplayer game. So the little, little trick is to do this. So I do a copy of the self update over here. So if I call this function, this super update, it's gonna call that. And on top of calling this over here, I also want to call the update speed. So when I will call the player update, it's gonna update its speed called a super update, which is this over here, which will update its position depending on its speed. And the speed will be updated over there. So I guess that's pretty much, oh yeah, and another few things I would like to do is, um, right now if you check over here, we create the player and then we add it to the list. Now it's gonna be a little bit different. By creating the player, it's gonna automatically add it to the list. So over here, it's gonna automatically add it to the list. And the list will be player list, which will no longer be a global variable. Because right now the this over here, this is a global variable. So you don't want global variable. So now it's gonna be linked with the, the player. So this is static. There there is only one list like that. So it on, there is only one copy. While everything related with the self um, exists for every single player that exists. So every um, player as its own ID, but there's only one list. Now there was also another uh, few things I would like to do. So this over here no longer works. So it should be player list like that, but a, a better way to do that, um, to keep it a little bit more modular right now, the project is small, so it's not really a big deal, but eventually there's going to be a lot of stuff going on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a global function. Uh, static function called onConnect, 
which takes as a parameter a socket. And basically all the code we have related with the player will be inside that. So over here we create a player, which will also put it inside the list. And then we add our key press because the, the key press is only relevant if you're a player because we update player properties. So it should be inside the player module slash class. And same thing goes for here. So the socket module should not be aware of how player is managed. It, it's not the job of the IO socket to know that kind of detail. All it should know is that it needs to call the function on disconnect. And this function will on this connect. And that function gonna handle the removal of the player. Now the next thing that would need to be a little bit more modular is this over here. So right now we like the, the global loop should not be aware of how to update a player. So it's gonna be just player update and that function gonna do exactly this over here. So there's many, many different ways of doing that part. I'm gonna go with the most simple. Um, I'm gonna add the package. Okay, something like this. So the update loops through every player called the update function. Add a little package. This should be uh, another distinct function. And for now, I'll keep it like that. So it would be pack equal the update, and then we emit the new position. So just a little recap, okay? Um, when a player connects, this function is called and whoops, that, that could kind of help connect. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Okay, so when a player connects, this function over here is called. This function over here creates a new player depending on the socket ID that we assigned over here. Um, so we create a new player. Creating a new player, what it does is it um, takes an entity. So it takes this as its model add a bunch of new attributes for it, um, override the update for, um, for updating the speed and then doing the regular update. And updating the speed takes into consideration if you're pressing right or pressing left and pressing up. Those things will be updated over here whenever the player will receive a um, key press command. So that's the next thing um, Unconnect does. It has a listener for any key press package that's gonna update the pressing left, right, and up, which um, will impact stuff. Now, when the player disconnects, this function is called, so it removes it from the player list. And finally, um, in, the, in the main loop of the game, we call the player update. So this, the job of this function is to update all the player, loop through all the players, update them, and create a little package that will be returned. And then we loop through all the sockets and we emit the new position, or all the position there. So now if we test it, so as usual, you type not app.js, you open Google Chrome, go to localhost 2000. And as you can see, we have exactly the same behavior than before. So all the changes we have done have not impacted the player, but internally this is a lot cleaner. And it will be a lot, um, when, when, when we will include the bullets, it's gonna make a lot more sense to have this kind of structure. So let's go ahead and add um, the bullets. So this is how the bullets will look roughly. So a bullet, we create an entity, we override the ID with a random ID, um, in order to create a bullet, we will need to pass a angle. The angle, there's gonna be a lot more parameters eventually. But for now, it's only the angle, then we do some trigonometry. I already covered that in the single player um, game. But this will set our x, speed x and speed y. For the update loop, we will once again need to override the update loop 
because we don't want the bullet to stay forever. Um, by default, an entity will never get removed, but in our case for the bullet, we want to remove it after, let's say, 100 frames. So every frame, we're gonna increase the timer. If it's too big, we're gonna set the to remove flag that will remove itself um, in pretty soon. So, and then we add it to the list. The list goes here. This is the list. Now we also need a update function. So the update function gonna look pretty much the same than the than the player bullet. So we we'll loop through every bullet. For each of them, we call the update. Then we'll recreate a little package. In our case, we only need a the X and the Y. There's no num. Because right there, there's like a four. Every player has a different number. But for the bullets, it's gonna be all the same for now, at least. Eventually, we will add an image. Eventually, every bullet will have a owner, so there will be collision and stuff like that. But for now, I just want to add some bullets into the game, and I think that's pretty much all we need for bullets to work. Okay. Now we need to actually create them. So what I was thinking um, here, we call the pack. Oh yeah, um, the package will need to be a bit different. So right now the package is like an array. But now we have two types of packages. We'll have the pack of players over here. It's still an array, but it's gonna be pack.player to access the player array. And here, bullet. And we're gonna ship this. Now one thing I wanted to change was in the update of the bullet, we are gonna create new bullets over here. Because right now there's no way to create bullets. So what I'm gonna do is um, if the math random is less than let's say one, which happens two times per second approximately. And we are going to create a bullet with a random angle. So math random is a value between zero and one. So this will be between zero and 360. So in a random direction. Finally, because we changed our package, so now it has the attribute player and bullets, we need to modify the client because the client does not know how to draw um, bullets. So right now, if you remember correctly, we listen to the new position um, message. Right now, we just assume that it's an array. We'll loop through it and then we fill text depending on the number. Now it's gonna be a little bit different. So we're gonna loop through all the players. Data.player. Like this. And then we're gonna do the same, but for bullets. Now bullets don't have a number, so instead we're gonna draw, um, draw them. X minus five, ten, ten. So this will draw a rec this will draw a rectangle that has a width and a height of ten, and the top right corner of the bullet is gonna be at X minus five and Y minus five. So this to make sure that the center of the of the rectangle is indeed the X and the Y. The center and not the top left. Okay, so now as usual, we start a server, we go to localhost 2000, and there we have it. So I can join with another client over here. So as you can see, all the players in the game see the same bullets. They are gen randomly generated, the random direction. Obviously in the future, um, we're gonna make it so the player shoot bullets and we, all, we will also include collision with HP and, and that kind of stuff. What I'm planning to do is to make some kind of PVP game. If you just appear out of nowhere, you shoot the other player, you try to kill him. If he dies, you just respawn and there's like a kill count counter. I'm also planning to add chat pretty soon. And with the chat, we will be able to add some debugging options. Because right now, debugging is um, really hard. Um, in, in this video, everything works fine, but most of the time, you're gonna have some struggle. 
and debugging is an important part. Being able to spy variables on the server is very handy. So I'm going to cover that um, in the next episode. So thanks a lot for watching and don't forget to click the annotation on the screen to go check out the next episode. So see ya!